I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. Thank you, Lord. And all my life you have been so, so good. With that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in the darkest night. You are close like no other. I know you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful. Thank you, Lord. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. Thank you, Lord. With every breath that I am able, yeah, God. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh. Sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. What a beautiful song. Thinking about the goodness of God. Praise God. Amen. Now we're getting ready for the Word of God. We want you to... 
uh, support the woman of God as she comes forth. We know that this is our uh, missionary Sunday, our back to church Sunday. Praise God, uh, the first one for the new year. And uh, 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 so we want to just think about that as we bring before you at this time our preacher of the hour, uh, Evangelist Jordan. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise Amen. God. Praise God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for all that you are to us, because truly you are our everything, Lord. I thank you for bringing us together one more time. Still clothing our right mind, the activity of our limbs, dear God. Still able to know one another, take care of ourselves as well as others, dear God. We thank you, dear God, for everything that you are to us, dear God. Oh, God, remember me now I'm about to bring your word, dear God, asking you to use me for your glory, dear God. Oh, God, allow me to say what it is you once said and not what I want, dear God. Crucify self the more that you may rise up more in me, dear God. Lord, allow your word to go, to strengthen, to heal, dear God. Oh, God, and soothe the mind of your people, dear God. Allow it, dear God, to touch a center man on the, on the line, dear God. Oh, God, that they may come back saying, running, asking, what must I do to be saved? Lord, if you do these things, I will forever praise, honor, glorify your name. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise God. I give honor to God, to our Bishop Anderson, our Pastor Glover, our Elder Robinson, to everyone, Mother Anderson, everyone underneath the sound of my voice i praise god to be able to hear your voices one more time even in the midst of a crisis god is still who he said he is and he will bring about wonders in our lives if we allow him to do so i praise god he is a good god on today and he's always as i always say He's always worthy of my praise and will always be worthy of my praise. As the song said, all my life, that's personal. Every one of us on this line can think about that. All my life, he's been faithful. I praise God. He's been faithful to us. He's been faithful to us. He's protecting us. He's keeping us protected. No matter what it looks like, no matter what's happening, God is still a healer. And he's able, my God, to deliver our souls, heal our bodies, and make us as brand new. Because he let me know one time, when you only got one body, so you got to take care of that body. Regardless of what people think or how people may feel, you have to do what God say do. You got to take care of you so God can take care of you. He put things in our ways and things in our paths that we are able to do. We got to do it. And what we can do, we know that God can. And I thank God for who God is in my life. He's a healer on today. I know. I'm a witness to it. He's a deliverer because he has delivered me from sin. He has delivered me from lying. He has delivered me from drinking. He has delivered me from smoking cigarettes. Praise God I wasn't deep down in drugs. But when I took a, a dab here and there, God delivered me. When people was plotting and people gave me things that almost took me out of this world. Thank God. God delivered me. Hey, the song say I cried. And God delivered me. He delivered my poor soul. Praise God. I thank God those can get prayers through. Continue to pray my strength in the Lord. Praise God. I'm not going to be before you long. I'm just going to say what well, God once said, because we have a word. I have a word from the Lord to deliver. And it's only from the Lord. It's not my word. I was struggling here. I didn't know I had it all together. <laughs> this says, goes to show that God can, when you put God in control, God does what he wants. So I had my word together. It was up early this morning. Adding some more stuff to it. Got here sitting right here, and he changed the message. And he said, I want you to talk about the fruit of the Spirit, which is love. 
Praise God. And we're gonna we 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 know that love covers a whole thing and it it means a whole got a lot of meanings for people. But we we are going to talk about the love of God. We're gonna talk about how God loves us and how he expects us to love one another and how he expects us to love our husbands and how he expects us to love our wives and how he expects us to love our children. Anyone that comes in our paths, he's expecting us to love them. And 1 John 3 and 1 says, Behold what man of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. So don't think it's strange because the world don't know you and it ain't even all about how you dress and what you wear. It's all about your separation and how you is connected with God. Don't get me wrong, your clothing or whatever play a part, but this love here is something that comes from God. He said, man of love, the father. So it came straight from God. God loved us from the beginning. While we was yet sinners, Christ died for us. So he loved us from the beginning. And then because he loved us so much, he sent his son. So that his son will die for our sins. So there's no reason why we should be walking in sin. There's no reason why we should be giving in to sin. I don't care whether it's coming through somebody or whether the enemy is messing with you to make you sin. God has delivered us. Why? Because we are now called the sons of God. And we know that if anybody that is a son of God, there's no sinning. There's nothing there that we are only supposed to be doing and representing. And say the world know us now. Why? Because we ain't a part of the world. We're separated from the world. We love God. And when we love God, we're going to show him that we love him. But in the dictionary, the dictionary says, the English Webster dictionary says, it's an intense affection, affectionate concern for, or passionate attraction to another. So we see there's two. Even in this definition, there's two meanings here. An intense affection and then a passionate attraction. So people can have affectionate love for you and then people can just have an attraction to you. So when they have an attraction to God, they're going to be limited ways of showing God how much you love them, how much they love God, because it's just an attraction. It's just a feeling. Oh, I love him because he opened up a door, because he gave me a job, because he, I, 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 uh, somebody died and I inherited some money. So now you got an attraction. Oh, I'm going to pay a big tithe now. Oh, I'm going to come to church every other Sunday. Oh, I'm going I'm to I'm go sing in the choir and sing the song that, that I want to sing. But then when I can't sing the songs that I want to sing, then we don't see him no more in the choir. I'm only going to lead the service when I'm able to show off my dress. These are attractions to God. But when we have an intense affection towards God and a concern for what God expects from us, then we're going to live a different life. Our love is going to show differently because we have an intense affection towards one another. Tenderhearted. Forgiving one another as Christ also forgave the church. So therefore, when this affection, see, this is a thing about love. When you have an affection for somebody, when you have affection for your husband, not because he looked good, not because he can provide for you, not because he can give you the best house, the best car and other things, but because you have an affection affection for this man you're going to overlook some things that he do you're going to overlook some things that he said i'm not going to say to allow him to disrespect you but 
certain things you not gonna abide by it why because you got an affection for him and when he has one for you he ain't gonna be calling you out your name he ain't gonna be treating you any kind of way why because this is an affection here and then when they both husband and wife get saved then they got a oh my goodness this is a love that that's beyond all measures now Beyond all measures, Ephesians 5 and 28. Ephesians 5 and 28 says, just get it right quick. 5 and 28, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. We're talking about love now. So therefore, if you have love for your wife and love for your husband like you love your body, then it ain't going to be no problem. Because everybody's supposed to love themselves, take care of themselves. So therefore, if you take care of yourself and love yourself, then it becomes easier to love others. Then it becomes easier to love that wife or that husband. Verse 29 says, after all, no man ever hated his own body. But he feeds and cares for it, just as Christ does the church. So just like Christ loves us and looks out for us and take care of his sanctuary. Yes, God will take care of his sanctuary. In the Old Testament, you will read how Solomon was building the temple of God and how, how God told him he wanted that temple to be. When I was reading it, I said, this is amazing. This is awesome. So we walk around and we dress up ourselves and we put on our fine hats and our fine clothes. What about the temple of God? Why I can't have a nice dress and a nice hat and whatever else that goes on that's supposed to go on in the church to dress up the church as well. So Christ loved the church just as Christ does the church. Even though the church is, he's talking about the individual. Now, there are some practical things here because we're told that the biblical way for a husband to treat his wife is to love her as Christ loved the church. So just like Christ loved us, that's how we're supposed to love our husbands and we're supposed to love our wives. She needs to be spiritually fed and spiritually cared for. So not, not only does that wife or that husband well, let's talk about the husband now. So not only does that wife need to be spiritually fed and spiritually cared for. It got to be naturally cared for. And Christ takes care both angles. He takes care of the natural side of us and he takes care of the spiritual side of us. But the only way he can take care of that spiritual side is for us to be in connection with him. He reigns on the just and he reigns on the unjust. But those that are sons of God and has given their lives to him completely and have received that Holy Ghost so that God can, so that Holy Ghost can teach them how to live for Christ. Because you don't know how to live for Christ if you don't got the spirit of God in you. It can't teach you nothing. A teacher can teach a student all he want, but unless that student has that mind to want to pass that class and move on, that student ain't going to go nowhere. You see some students in school get skipped because their IQ is high or because they just have that, that ump that I'm, I'm going to get out. I'm going to move forward. I want to I wanna go higher. I want to go further. And they wind up achieving greater things in life and it's the same way the spiritual way it's the same thing the spiritual way when you decide that you want to move forward in god god will take you god will take you to that place he will take you to the place that he wants you to go and he will teach you the things that that you need to know in order to make this journey. Because this is a spiritual journey. Once you give your life to the Lord and the Lord enters into you through the Holy Ghost and your body becomes his temple. You become 
and begin to walk in a spiritual realm now. You begin to see things on a spiritual level. You're no longer carnal. Now, mind you, outwardly, you're fleshly. And outwardly to the world, you're carnal. But inwardly, you're connected to God. So you're spiritual. That's why you got to walk in the spirit so you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. So therefore, once you realize that you are a spiritual being, then it'll become easier. Your spiritual walk will become easier. Our grandmother used to say all the time, this walk ain't hard. You make it hard. People make it hard. She used to sit up in a rocking chair and talk to me. And I wasn't even savior. That's why I always say I was already taught salvation. Always taught salvation. How to live. Once you get saved, how to live. People get saved and then they not taught. Yeah, they say, well, you got the Bible. You read the Bible. But when you get saved, you don't automatically quickly understand the word of God. So therefore, we ought to be taught. We should be taught. And as we're being taught, that individual began to grow, began to move up in levels. Why? Because they're being taught. They're being taught the word of God. They're being taught about God. And as they're being taught, God is teaching them through the Holy Ghost. He say, we'll lead and guide you into all truth. So that means when you get saved, you ain't going to automatically know about God. You ain't going to automatically know how to live unless, you know, like I was. I was around someone that was teaching me constantly. But there are people that don't know, come into the body of Christ and don't know anything about Christ. Don't even know how to tarry. They become confused. I've seen people on the altar that you can see the scaredness on them because they don't, they, they, they have never experienced anything like that. So you have, they have to been teach. They have to be taught. Say, don't worry about it. Don't worry about wiping your face. Don't worry about nothing. Just put your hands up and leave everything to God and us. Because those that are around them know exactly what not to do and what to do. Especially when the power of God takes over the individual. So therefore, this love that God wants us to have. He wants us to have his love. He wants us to be connected to him. He wants us to, to stay connected to him. So from the multimedia dictionary, Webster New World, love means a feeling of brotherhood and goodwill towards another. This word love is very powerful and how we use it will determine how effective it is. So we can't, we can't, we can't use love, even though it is being used. But we shouldn't. Let me put it that way. We shouldn't use love lightly. We should take love as the same way that we take God. If we reverence God and reverence his son, that's how we should reverence love. Because his word said, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one for another. So this love that we are representing is supposed to be so powerful because it's connected to God. So if you can't, if you can't do nothing from, for nobody, you can love them. If you can't, if you ain't got no money to give them, you can love them. If you ain't got a home to put them in, you can love them. Because that's all God did. That's all God did. He sent his son. And all his son did was walk the earth for, uh, 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 for 33 years. And the last three years of his life, he began his ministry. Began his ministry representing the love of God. And when he got in the garden of Gethsemane, he said, not my will, but thy will be done. Still representing the love that God gave him to give to us. And he went on and did what he had to do for us. And he rose from the dead for us. And he went back to heaven for us. 
all of that was shown in love. In love. So we can't do nothing else for people. We can love them. And I mean truly and genuinely love them. Sometimes you don't even... In, in, in some relationships with husband and wife, sometimes they don't even have to say, oh, honey, I love you, or I love you. They can feel that love within that home. They can talk to one another and don't even open up their mouths to one another because they love one another. Christ was effective in showing it to us by dying on the cross for us. And then ra rising up for the, from the dead for us. So that we may live again with him. With him. That second resurrection, if we happen to die, God forbid, and we rise again, the second resurrection, we going back to live with him. And John 10 and 10 said, KJV, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy but I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. That's what he came for, to bring life. And if we, when we show love to people, we can bring life to them. Somebody could be down, somebody could be below, somebody could be depressed. And we go and talk to them in love. We call them up on the phone. We can't get to them. That lift them up. Just like it does when we're going through a trial. Are we going through an illness? Are we going through a sickness or, a, or whatever situation that we may be going through? And we get on our knees and we begin to pray to God. We, we connect to him. And next thing you know, he lift that up. He lift that burden off from us. So without him, life is in Christ and through Christ. So without him, we have no life. We're going to be miserable. Sinners on the line, you're going to be miserable. I don't care how much your life may be going well now. You don't have Christ in your life. It's going to turn miserable for you. I was just talking to my husband. Yesterday, day before yesterday. Sad. Sitting down, don't even realize what's happened to you. What's happening to you. Miserable. No, you're miserable. But refuse to give your life to the Lord. And think you're going to get all his blessings. Think you're going to get all his mercies. Because after a while, mercy and goodness going to run out. Because he going to get tired Hey, glory of the foolishness that the people are doing. And here's the thing. You can't bring God to a shame, but he can bring you to a shame. But when you have taste of his goodness and you have went back on him and refused to come back to him, it's just like a dog that turned to the vomit and bring it back up. Take it all back in. Since let's not get confused with what the devil is dangling in our faces. Because God wants us to be true to him and love him from the bottom of our hearts, from the depths of our souls. Behold the man of love that God has bestowed. Hey, thank you, Lord. I thank him for his love on today. Because he didn't have to do it. But I'm so glad that he did. I'm so glad that he loved me. That he sent his son to die for me. So that I may live again. Oh, thank you, Lord. We must love. And we must love right. We must not love. We must not love how we want to love. But we got to love how God says love. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hey, he bestowed it upon us. Oh, my God. Bestow is a blessing. Biblically, it means a blessing. 
So every time you see that word in the Bible, it means that a blessing has taken place. <laughs> Oh, my God, can't you think about the blessings that God has bestowed upon you? One of them, you are alive today. Oh, thank God, thank God. You're saved today. You're sanctified, holy. God want us, hey, my God, to grab hold to that sanctification, to that sanctifiedness. He want us to say it and say it in authority. If God has sanctified you, he wants you to say that he sanctified you because nobody can do it but the Lord. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord. I ain't ashamed. Hey, I'm not ashamed hey, to tell the world about Jesus. Hey, his love is real on today. His love is real. His love is real. God bestowed his love upon us. Oh, thank God. It's a gift. He gave it to us as a gift. He put it upon us. Love is something you have to give. You have to show. Or you can give it to people. Whether you give it to them through money. Or whether you give it to them through. However however you choose to show it. That's how you give it. And it doesn't put you in a higher standard. Than the next person. That may not be showing it that way. I'm not really thrilled. At how people may be able can give me money or may be able to 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 wash my car i don't have a car i'm just using that general uh figure of speech i'm not really thrilled in all of that i'm glad about it i appreciate it but anybody can come do those things anybody can come give you money i have given money to people on the street that pass by and ask for help if they if they pierce my soul and i uh, I take some people feelings anyway. So if I see things and I see they need help and I be at McDonald's and somebody walk in and say, excuse me, can you buy this for me? And I'll go buy it for them. Because I've been there. I've been there when my refrigerator was empty. I've been there when I didn't have a dime in my pocket. I've been there when I didn't know which way to turn. But I thank God for his love that he bestowed upon me and my family. Can't leave my family out. Yeah, because they are a part of me. And your family is a part of you. So don't give up on your family. Don't give up on your children. Don't give up on your aunts and your uncles. Don't give up on, on your grandchildren. Because they still need God. They still need your love. And even if they... Don't give their lives to the Lord. You still got to love them. I mean, you may wake up and, and realize that, all right, now, this is enough. They, 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 they just using me. Or they, they just trying to take advantage of me. Ain't, ain't, nothing, ain't nothing wrong with stopping. All right, that's enough. That's enough. Because, see, now you are trying to get all the benefits from me. That God has given me. Because they ain't giving you nothing. But yet and still. You don't want to give no acknowledgement to God. You don't want to acknowledge him. You don't want to come to church. You say okay it's time for Bible study. You don't want to show up. Alright it's time for Friday night service. You don't want to come out. But as soon as you get in trouble. You dial in the number. Oh can you lend me this. Oh, can you, can you come and see me? Comes a time. I told my husband, I said, comes a time. That prayer won't even do nothing for you. God won't even allow you. I used to hear Bishop Mingo say that. And I used to be like, wait a minute. How, how, how you ain't going to pray for somebody? Especially if they asking for prayer. But I saw it with my own eyes. I saw a person grab hold of Bishop Mingo. And ask Bishop Mingo to pray for her. And I'm here to tell you, Bishop Mingo didn't pray. That person was going through an ordeal. After the fact, I was a young girl. 
I don't even believe I was a teenager yet. And seeing such a thing was confusing to me. But see, this is why I say you got to teach people. Because I could have took that and never got saved. Because I could have took it upon myself and say, wait a minute. My aunt ain't even thinking about the souls of this person. They ask them for prayer. Why you ain't praying? God is a merciful God. But she taught me something. And then when she got back to the house and we was there, she began to explain the situation. This was a, a lady that turned her back on the Lord. Bishop Mingo, Mother Wilson, will go up in this lady's house and talk to this lady. This lady would not come to church. They would witness to this lady, tell this lady about being saved. Oh, I'm saved already. Say all oh, manner of things, evil things against them. Right in, right in their face. But they continue on showing the love. When, when, when she was well enough and wanted prayer, yes, Bishop Mingo prayed for her. Would go to her house, sit up in the house. That's why I say, yes, you don't, you don't put yourself in a place with sinners all the time, but in order to draw them in and in order for them not to have an excuse, you have to interact with them. You don't become so holy that you don't, you can't go get nobody that's unholy. Cause they was, they was in the unholy, unholy people houses, praying for them, witnessing to them, talking to them. And this woman refused. I wasn't all the time with them, so I didn't get the full understanding of that particular day. Because I was in school. But when she explained it to me, said, come a time that God get tired of people's foolishness when he don't even want to hear what they got to say. He don't even want to hear in a sense, and I'm, a, I'm, I'm just hypothetically putting it this way. He don't even hear... He don't want to hear what we going to say about that person because that person done turned their back on God. And when you turn your back on God, I'm here to tell you, God will turn his back on you. And when you thinking that, oh, yeah, I, I can get to God whenever I want. All I got to go is go to my bishop. All I got to do is go to my pastor. All I got to do is call up the evangelist. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. And the evangelist tell you, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I got to go right now. I got to go. What well, can you pray for me? I got to go right now. I got to go. I'll be right back. I I'll call you back. Now, you make sure you call him back so you won't be lying. But if the Lord tell you not to pray, you can't pray. You can't pray. And people get, I saw that with my own eyes. So I know that it, it, it can happen. And I have been stuck out there in the world where I could not even, I, I, I didn't even feel nothing from God anymore. Unsaved. I don't want y'all to think um, this happened to me being saved. So we have to, coming on in, we have to keep ourselves connected to God, not to man. No matter what man look like they can give for us, give, do for us, give to us, we have to remember that God is our savior, not man. You get on that altar and you tarry. Nobody around that altar can give you the Holy Ghost. So that's why it's very important to get it. No matter what people say, those who ain't got it better get it because you're going to need it. You're going to need it on in your life. You may be facing some situations now that you can't get over. You can't step over. You can't get through because you ain't got the power to get through it. Because it's only the Holy Ghost that's going to take us through these trials. Help us get through it. So now, as I said, I'm coming on in. I ain't keeping y'all out here on this line. God is good. And his mercy endure forever. And he wants us to love one another. And he wants us to love him. Deuteronomy 2, 6 and 5 says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. So therefore, we learn to love God that way. We'll be able to produce the correct love 
for everybody else that we encounter, especially for the household of faith. Because we loving God with our heart. That means that God got our heart. So that means we ain't holding no foolishness in our heart. We're going to love him with our soul. That means all our emotions is going to be right. That means all our, our, our actions is going to be right. Because that is that is within our souls. That's what we're saving. So we got crazy emotions and and, and, and the wrong willpowers and the, and the wrong thoughts. It's going to go to our heart. Next thing you know, we can't, we can't do nothing. First John 3, 18 says, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Now, even though truth is at the end of that sentence, if you don't be truthful, your love ain't going to mean nothing. Because you're going to be loving a lie. If you don't be truthful, your deeds ain't going to mean nothing. I don't care how much money. I don't care how, how much you, you go buy, take somebody food shopping and fill every refrigerator up where they got to go get a freezer. It ain't going to mean nothing if it ain't truthful. So not only in word, not only just saying it, but in deed and in truth. Proverbs 10 and 12 says, hatred stirreth up strives, strifes, but love covers sin. Hatred. We ain't got no hatred. They ain't talking to us. We ain't got no hatred. We ain't, got, we, we ain't walking around here hating nobody. And even though you may not produce the word from out of your mouth or your tongue, if it's in your heart, it's there, and you're actually going to show the hatred. Hate and love mm -mm, can't work together. And if you hate one minute and you love another minute, you're bifobal. And I'm probably saying the word wrong. You, you, you're confused there. Strife means the act or state of fighting or quarrel. Quarrel. Every time you turn around, you're arguing with somebody about something. Nobody can't tell you nothing because you're arguing. It goes into an argument. That's hatred. That means it's in your heart. Because if it ain't in your heart, people can talk to you. People can have a conversation with you. You won't take everything out of context. I'm going to leave that alone. John 15 and 13 says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. For his friends. So you ain't picking out people who you going to love. You ain't going to pick out people who you love. You're going to love everybody. And you're going to love everybody the same way. So, saints, because of God's love for us. Sorry about that. People always want to call you when you, <laughs> the wrong times. So, you see, saints, because of God's love for us, he gave his only begotten son, which means to bring into being produce so that he will redeem us from his from this Adam sinful nature so even though Jesus was up there with with his father maybe and this is just my thought this ain't biblical or nothing I heard maybe he didn't really want to leave from up there satisfied up there I'm with my father everything is clean everything is pure but he saw that his father had a need. His father looking down on this sinful nature. Everything coming up, sin coming up to him. Oh my goodness. I got to clean up this world. I got to do something with this world. He said, Father, give me a body. Give me a body. I'll go on down. And he did. He came down in the form of a human being. So that give explanation that when we give our lives to the Lord, we become in the spiritual realm because we become as him. He said, I and our father are one. We become the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we do know that when he appears, 
We're going to be like him. We're going to be just like him. And what is that likeness? Spiritual body. We're going to take on a new body, a new look, a new thought. All of those things. So saints, love like Christ loved. Regardless. And if you find it hard to love a person due to the fact of what they may have said or may have done, get on your knees. Fast about it. Don't, don't worry about that next person and what they're doing and they're not loving you. You just make sure you keep loving. And you got to love. This is the, the, you got to love like Christ. You got to love like he loved. And how did he love? By sending his son. Bestowed that love upon us. Think about it. Because he loved his son so much, he sent him. And that's the kind of love we got to have. We got to love people so much that we will do anything for them. Not wrong now. I ain't telling you compromise and do, do it wrong. No. We got to love them so much that we will do anything to get them right. Help them to get right. And wait for God to tell you to let them go. And give it to the Lord. Give them to the Lord. But still love them. So again. Behold what man of love. The father has restored upon us. That we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not. Because he knew him not. God bless you.